All right, guys, welcome to the Big Mango. Yeah, we're here in Bangkok, Thailand. Mm -hmm. And if you've been traveling in Southeast Asia for a while or backpacking, chances are you are gonna pass through Bangkok at some point in time. At least a few times. We've been here in Bangkok many times before. So we feel like we've gotten to know the city a little better each yeah. time. And with this video, we're gonna show you 25 things to do in Bangkok, Thailand. Check it out. In this video, we visit the Grand Palace and plenty of watts, enjoy street food, and then have drinks at a rooftop bar, weave our way through crowded markets, and take our time visiting museums. We tried to see and do as much as we could with our time here, so consider this a little taste of what Bangkok has to offer. Now let's get started. So we are currently visiting the Grand Palace, and this is the most iconic site in all of Bangkok, and for good reason. It's breathtaking, like seriously, if you look at the details, the little mosaics, the mirrors, the gold, it's impressive and it's huge. So we're gonna give you a quick tour. Actually, it's gonna be a long tour, so stick around. The Grand Palace was once the residence of the Kings of Siam, and while the current monarchy resides in Dusit Palace, the Grand Palace is still used for official events and functions. There is a strict dress code in order to visit, so dress modestly. That means no bare legs or shoulders for both men and women. It's also a good idea to carry your passport as security can be a little tight. We were asked for hours. Within the grounds of the Grand Palace, you'll also find Wat Prakau. This wat houses the Emerald Buddha, which is a figure of a seated Buddha said to have originated in India. Unfortunately, no video or photography is allowed, but be sure to visit if you're already there. Alright, so we just avoided the tourist boat, which was going to cost us 100 baht. Right, so there's a lot of different tourist boat options, but if you want to travel like a local, you're going to take the Chao Phraya Express boat. Yeah. And this is something you absolutely have to do in Bangkok. It's just it's such an iconic experience, so we yeah. can't wait to take a ride. And tickets are only 14 baht per person. That's right. And Let's go get on. We're heading to Waterloo. The Chao Praia is a major river which flows through Bangkok and then continues its downward journey to the Gulf of Thailand. Many tourist attractions sit along the river's edge, so depending on where you're going, taking the Chao Praia Express can be one of the most efficient ways to get around. It's also quite the experience as you're guaranteed to see all sorts of vessels competing for space on the water. Alright, so I got sprayed a couple of times with that chocolate colored water on the Chow Praia, but we're now at Waterun. Sam is befriending the cats, and we're gonna go visit the temple. Oh! Oh! Hi! Hi! Oh, look at your eyes! So Water Rune is currently under restoration, which means there's a lot of scaffolding around the main structure. However, you can still climb up, so we're looking for the steps and then we're going to head up and hopefully get some better views. Wat Arun, also known as the Temple of Dawn, is said to be most beautiful when the sun casts its first light. We clearly weren't up that early, but we agree that it's a beautiful temple and what really sets it apart are the porcelain decorations against an all-white background. So unfortunately, this is as far up as we can go. We were only able to climb one story and then all the entrances are blocked off because of the construction. But I mean, you do still get sort of a cool perspective. and today we're visiting one of the most popular markets in all of Bangkok. We're going to Chata Chak. Yeah. <laughs> it's a massive market. It's open only on the weekends and we're going to yes. eat a lot of Thai street food today. So That's come join us. We are now officially entering the market and it is packed. We're here around noon and it's just full of people. And this is just the entrance. Oh. Chata Chak, also called JJ Market, is huge. 
It has over 8,000 stalls and it is divided into 27 sections, each specializing in something different be it books and antiques or clothes and home decor. We focused on street food and after wandering for a few hours, we still left feeling like we had barely put a dent on the map. And since we're talking about Thai street food, a few of our personal favorites are banana roti, mango sticky rice, and coconut ice cream. So we finally stumbled upon a stand that was making roti, and we got my favorite, yeah. banana, egg, and I think it's condensed milk and chocolate as well. Yeah. Oh, it looks so good. Got it all on this one. It's freshly made. Man, I like. we love Thai banana pancakes. This is like quintessential Thai street food. Mm. It's so sweet, oh my gosh. I'm loving it. Isn't that good? Really, really loving it. Like, we've, re we've really that? had a sweet tooth today. <laughs> we have. <laughs> Sammy boy is oh, going yeah. big. Going big, going for yeah. a huge slice of mango. That's Lots of one rice. bite for a big boy. Oh man, that so good. good. This is one of those like pie desserts that no matter how much I've ate for the day, I could like you know be totally stuffed, and I'm still I've still got a bit of room for There's this. There's always room for sticky rice. It's just that mango. good. It's mango just that rice. good. Love that stuff, and if you're coming here, I mean, at 50 baht, it's it's really cheap, and I highly recommend trying this. You can have it on the street, you can have it in restaurants, you can have it just about anywhere. This is a classic Thai dessert. So not too far from Chattachak Market, you also have Chattachak Park, and this appears to be a very popular place on the weekend with blue skies, the sun's out. So we're just enjoying a quick stroll here, because why not? It's nearby. At the park, you can rent straw mats for a picnic, hire a paddle boat, or just enjoy a leisurely stroll. So this morning, we're going to be visiting the Jim Thompson House and Museum. And Jim Thompson was an architect and businessman from the United States, and he helped revive the Thai silk trade here. So we're going to be touring his home, which is now a museum. It's a guided tour. And yeah, it should be cool. So that was a pretty cool guided tour. We're not allowed to film inside the home, but I can tell you that the gardens are beautiful and Jim Thompson was an avid art collector. So you get to see pieces from all over Southeast Asia, from Cambodia, from Myanmar, different parts of Thailand, um, and the furniture is pretty intricate. It's pretty spectacular, I have to say. So if you enjoy that kind of thing, this museum is definitely worth visiting. So being the homebodies that we are, tonight we were thinking, eh, hey, let's just stay in the hotel and not do much. And also, being the budget travelers that we are, then we were like, maybe let's just have drinks on our pool on the rooftop. It's on the ninth floor, the views will be nice. But no, we were like, we need to get out of this rut. We need to do something exciting. So we're at Cloud 47, it's the casual rooftop bar in Bangkok, and we're here for drinks. And the views are just insane up here. Yeah. So worth it. I've got a cold Chang in my hand, a pint of Chang. Yeah. It was, it was all worth it. It was only like a 10 minute walk from our hotel. So. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty awesome. And what else are you having aside from Chang? Because there's something else you always enjoy drinking. Dessert. Bailey's for dessert. Bailey's. Yeah. And I have a Mai Tai. There are lots of rooftop bars in Bangkok, perhaps none more famous than Sky Bar at Labua, where they film part of The Hangover 2. That being said, we appreciated Cloud 47's casual feel and the fact that they have a relaxed dress code. Alright, what is the plan? Tell us. So next up we're visiting Wat Sakit. It's also known as the Golden Mound. And the special thing about this temple is you get some amazing views of mm -hmm. Bangkok from the top. We've been here before, we yes. can't wait to, to go back again. Let's start climbing! This climb is actually quite refreshing. We're in the shade the whole time. It's very lush. You've got little waterfalls and streams trickling through. There's mist. 
Blowing at tired hikers. No. So it's pretty cool. We hope you're not feeling too templed out yet because we still have a few more to show you. Next up is Wat Po, better known as the Temple of the Reclining Buddha. Inside you'll find a Buddha stretched out 46 meters in length, which is quite the sight to behold. This temple is also famed as the birthplace of traditional Thai massage and the art is still taught there. So transportation is a big thing here in Bangkok and next up we're going to be riding the boat down the canals and I can already smell that water. Oh man, it's like rotten eggs and... Anyways, the water's black, check it out. So Sam, if you were to fall into the canals, what would be your plan of action? I don't think I would make it out, I would just disintegrate in the water. <laughs> Another thing you need to make time for while in Bangkok is riding water taxis, which zip through the city's canals avoiding heavy traffic. The service is fast and cheap, but the water is beyond dirty, so you'll want to keep your mouth shut and pull up the plastic sheets so you don't get sprayed in the face. Another cool place to visit in Bangkok is Pak Klong, which is the biggest fresh flower market in the city. Apparently it's most active between midnight and dawn when fresh flowers are delivered and buyers get their stock, but that would have been a bit too early for us. So there are lots of flower shops in this area, but then you also have the actual market, which is like a huge warehouse with hundreds of different booths and like all these different flowers. So we finally found that. We thought we had seen the market, but really we were just looking at the little shops. Chinatown, which sits along Yawarat Road. The red paper lanterns and dim sum restaurants will let you know you've arrived. One of the most popular sites here is Wat Tri Meat, also known as the Temple of the Golden Buddha. This temple is home to the largest Buddha made out of solid gold in the world. The statue is 3 meters tall and weighs a whopping 5.5 tons. Sadly, we couldn't get this on video either. So we just finished visiting the Golden Buddha and I saw the signs for no flash photography, but I completely missed the thing about video. Yeah, so... And Sam found out the hard Yeah, way. because I have my microphone on, so I had to delete all the clips, so we can't yeah, show you the Golden Buddha, you. but it is impressive, and we can recommend coming here to yes. see it in person. So if you're in Bangkok and your aim is to go shopping, you need to come to Siam Station, because it is literally surrounded by malls. You have MBK, Central World, Siam Discovery, Siam Center, and Siam Paragon. So it's like shopping at Mecca, it is insane. We're gonna show you some clips from all the malls right now. It's a little bit overwhelming. Whether you want to watch a movie, shop for clothes, or grab a bite at a restaurant, this is a great place to do so. Just across from Central World, you'll find the Erawan Shrine, which is another prominent site in Bangkok. This Hindu shrine houses a statue of Praprom, the Thai representation of the Hindu god of creation Brahma, and you can often catch Thai dance troops performing in the background. If you enjoy museums, another place you should make time for is the National Museum, which has exhibits focused on Thai art and history. No cameras were allowed inside, but we spent at least a solid hour exploring the various galleries. Okay, Sam, so we just finished visiting the National Gallery. Tell us about it. Yeah, it's a massive, massive grounds. Mm -hmm. And there's so many different like sections to the museum. Yeah, lots explore. of galleries. Lots of different galleries. And we couldn't film inside, but we filmed a little bit outside, just to give you an idea of how big it is. Mm -hmm. And it's also really close to the Grand Palace. Yeah, like literally within walking distance. So on the day that you're going to go visit the Grand Palace and Wat Po, you can also come and visit this museum as well. Early morning escapades, where are we? Yeah, we're visiting Lumpini Park and this is a really awesome park because Bangkok does have a reputation of being a bit of a concrete jungle oh, yes. and that is well earned. 
but this is like a nice oasis within the city yeah. and it's just such a nice park you can come from 4 30 in the morning to 9 p.m at night uh -huh. and it's just it's just so nice to get a green escape here in the city let's go check it out Another place we visited was the Democracy Monument, which was commissioned in 1939 to commemorate the 1932 Siamese coup d'etat, which led to the establishment of a constitutional monarchy. So what are we doing, Audrey? Riding a tuk-tuk, hop in. Also, it wouldn't be a proper trip to Bangkok without hopping in at least one tuk-tuk. This is a fun way to zip around the city in a form of transportation you may have never tried before. Turns out we're staying two blocks away from a unicorn cafe. Unicorn cafe sounds like, oh, whatever. Magic. Why am I being dragged Pure to this? Magic. So this right here is the menu. How are we going to choose? And this smaller one is the recommended items. So yeah. What do you think, Sam? That's, that's more food than we were expecting. The food actually does look good. And we're sharing the cupcakes with our unicorns! So we just finished having lunch at the Unicorn Cafe and that was a lot of fun. What did you think? Yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, it's the atmosphere you go for. Yes. I'd say the food was okay. It was mm -hmm. decent. Yeah, we, we enjoyed the mains, but the desserts were a little so-so. We yeah. weren't completely sold on the icing, but we had a lot of fun playing with the unicorns. They were dancing, we shared our food. So yeah, if you're in Bangkok, definitely check it out. So getting around in Bangkok. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to get around. One of our favorite ways is by SkyTrain. It's just so efficient, it's air conditioned inside. And we just got a rabbit card, which allows us just to scan in and out. We can top up the money whenever we want. And that's a wrap for our visit to Bangkok. We hope you enjoyed this travel guide and that it gave you a few ideas of things to do, places to visit, and foods to eat on your trip. As always, if you have any other suggestions of things to do in Bangkok, feel free to share those with fellow travelers in the comments below. Happy travels and until next time!